Everybody, and welcome to Comics from the Future. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. We're here with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and this is our really big show. We show you some of the biggest and best books that are coming out uh, in a couple of weeks. They are up for pre-order, and your pre-orders are due by this weekend, so you don't miss out on any of the goodness. Mm -hmm. That's the most important part about this show is that you know about the books, us giving you the information, and that you can go place your pre-orders so you don't miss out because uh, we hate people who don't get to read the books that they want to read because they just didn't know. Yep, and there are some books uh, on this FOC that you definitely won't want to miss out on. We've got some second prints that you won't want to miss out on if you missed the first print, all that good stuff. So lots of yes. good stuff here. And you'll notice there is no DC on mm -hmm. this uh, because of President Day and how that falls. So the, the ordering for us is a little bit wonky on that, but that just means you have more money to spend on maybe some new stuff definitely. you didn't know that you wanted. So let's get into it. Starting with our featured comics. I'm going to break a little bit of news right here. You heard oh, it here beep, first. Beep, 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 beep. There is a new Deadpool movie coming out what? in July. And uh, now... A second one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're finally making a Deadpool movie. Um, rumor has it the Wolverine's going to be in it. I don't believe that. Yeah. But um, And we have a brand new Deadpool number one to go along with that. So... This is a brand new series written by Cody Ziegler. The art is by Roge Antonio. And it just, the solicitation just says it's a new era for the Merc with a Mouth. But this issue is going to introduce us to a new villain named Death Grip, who won't stop until he catches Deadpool in his Death Grip. So that's a very, yeah, it's a very death. clever name. I, they probably thought about that one for a while. This one comes out on uh, April 3rd. So you can get this one. I'm sure issues two and three will probably be out before before the movie comes mm -hmm. out. So, you know, if you've got a hankering for some brand new Deadpool to read, if you've read everything else, you've got a brand new book right here to jump into. So it should be really fun. I like the cover. I like everything about this. Yeah. Um, so that's our A cover right there. We have a blank variant. We have a Inhyuk Lee foil variant. And this is one of those where you need to check with your store on the price because the... Four ninety nine tag or whatever that is that's on it. It's probably not going to be that. It might be a little bit more because it's all foil. There's a Jan Battle do a Stormbreakers variant. <laughs> I just noticed that. Uh, there's a, a Javier Garin Vampire variant, and we're gearing up for the uh, big Blood Hunt event yeah. coming up starting in May. Uh, there's a, Mag a Miguel Mercado variant. I like the big gun, big '90s gun. A uh, Liefeld variant. You know, so that's that makes sense. Yeah, Liefeld is. Uh... Says he's retiring from Marvel. Right. So this could be one of the last covers. That's true. You get. That's true. And then we have a Sean Galloway Saturday morning connecting variant with Wolverine and, and Spider Man little magazines or comics or whatever down there. That's cool. Yeah, I would. I would love to have a Saturday morning Deadpool cartoon. <laughs> I don't know that you could air it on Saturday mornings, but you know, it'd be fun. Next up, we've got Star Wars Jango Fett. This is a mini series written by Ethan Sachs, who did your Star Wars Bounty Hunters series. And the arts by Luke Ross, who has done a lot of really good Star Wars work. Uh, and this is really cool. So this was kind of teased in that Star Wars Revelations issue uh, that we were going to be getting this Jango Fett series. But in this, Jango is after a stolen artifact that is at the center of a planet-wide war. Uh, and for some reason, he is being hunted by the bounty hunter Aura Singh. So, you know, when is the hunter become the hunted type Ooh. thing, I feel like. Uh, but this really cool, and there's still so much about Jango Fett that we don't know about, and kind of his his career as being uh, the most feared bounty hunter in the galaxy. So definitely pick this one up, especially if you like the bounty hunter series. Uh, if you like the writing, all of that, you'll definitely want to get on this one. But also, you know, we're getting close to uh, the 30th anniversary of um, Phantom Menace. We're getting back into kind of the prequel era. Territory. I don't. I don't want to think about it being thirty <laughs> years. Uh, uh, yeah, no. uh, but just really cool. So uh, check out this. You've got this A cover. We also have the uh, Women's History Month variant there with Rose. We have this one's really cool. This is the Derek Chu variant. Everything just looks very shiny. Uh, and we also have the movie variant. Next is Web of Spider-Man. So when I first saw this, I was thinking, great, a new Web of Spider-Man series, but it's not that. This is just a one-shot. And for me, um, I think of this kind of, sort of, like the Timeless books for Marvel, because, but, it, but it's not quite the same, uh, because this is uh, going to preview some of the biggest Spider-Man and Spider-related stories. Uh -huh. 
to come within the next year, like leading all the way out into January of 2025. So gang war is about to wrap up in the next month or so, or yeah, next month, early yeah. next month, I think. Um, and then, you know, what's next for Spider-Man? Not really sure yet, but this book is going to give us a previews of what's to come for Spider-Man and, and, and probably other spider characters as well. Yeah, probably so. all the kind of amazing, maybe Miles, yeah. maybe Spider-Boy, just some of the, the, the family. Yeah, so if you want to know what's coming for Spider-Man uh, between now and January, check out this book. It's going to give us a little taste of all that. And it's written by Steve Fox and the artist by Greg Land. I should have mentioned that too. So uh, we have this awesome A cover by Greg Capullo. I, Greg Capullo drawing anything is awesome, but yeah. drawing Spider-Man, yes, please. Uh, there's an Alex Maleev cover. There is an animation variant with, you know, good old 90s. Oh, uh, a giant scorpion. That's yeah, how did that happen? Um, there's a Greg Land variant. That's your interior artist. Maybe Chasm's going to be part of it. Not really yeah. sure. It seems like Ben Riley may play a part in this. Well, because the next one is the John Amated Jr. foreshadowing variant. And you see Scarlet Spider. You see Tombstone, Green Goblin. Uh, you know, and when we saw this first, we were just like, oh, that's cool. You know, it's nice to see Ben Riley in, in a cover. But this is called the foreshadowing variant. So what does that mean? He may I don't don know. his ripped off sleeve hoodie uh, once again. Maybe. And, you know, we're not saying that for sure. But if it's foreshadowing that, you know, could be. So I'm really excited for it. Okay, next up, we have X-Men Forever number one. This is a new miniseries uh, that is going to be kind of the spiritual sequel to Immortal X-Men. It sounds like it's going to be tying up a lot of the plot points that were in that. So this is by uh, Karen Gillan, and the art is by Luca Maraseca. And it just talks about that uh, it's part of the fall of House of X, so it does incorporate a lot of those storylines in it. But also, um, what is it? How, do you, how can you kill a digital god... And what do you do when the phoenix is bleeding out into nothing? So I'm very interested to see how much of a Mortal X-Men this is and how much of Fall of X this is. But Jean has been a big character, especially since the death of Jean Grey and all of that. Uh, you know she's going to, I mean, she's phoenix. She's going to be coming back. But what does that mean for the X-Men? I think this sounds really cool. Uh, and I'm not sure how many issues this is, but I know it's not a one-shot because there is a issue two solicited. Okay. Um, so this is our A cover, which I really, really like. We also have a Lyric's Mystique variant. We have a Mark Brooks Headshot variant. You're going to be seeing a lot of these this week. We've got a Phil Noto Quiet Council variant. And we have the X-Men 97 Cyclops action figure variant, which this is the back side of. Uh, the front side kind of just looks like the front of the box. I feel like to kill a digital god, you just hit delete. Yeah. Doesn't seem like it's that hard. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so next up is a new book called I Heart Skull Crusher. This is the first of a five-issue miniseries. This is written by Josie Campbell. The art is by Alessio Zano. And this sounds really cool. This sounds kind of like a post-apocalyptic you know, a world that we're in. Not really sure how it got that way. But it's about an 18-year-old girl named Trini who loves the sport of screaming painball, which that sounds fun and horrifying. And her hero is one of uh, is a screaming painball player named Skull Crusher. So Trini and a group of misfits are going to travel across the American wasteland to battle in Queen Mob's deadly tournament. I'm assuming a screaming painball tournament. <laughs> And maybe she'll get to meet her hero, Skull Crusher. Who knows? But uh, I like the art, the art style on this cover here. This sounds like really fun. You know, uh, uh, so, you know, post-apocalyptic stories. You think like Mad Max or something, but this feels a little bit more, you know, like colorful. Uh, colorful, <laughs> exactly. That's what I was looking for. So I think it sounds fun. So we have this A cover right here, and that is your uh, interior artist too, uh, Alessio Zano. Uh, and then our B cover here is um, Rico. Rico, yeah. yeah. Okay, next up we have a new miniseries. Uh, is it miniseries? Oh, it's an ongoing. Uh, which, you know, ongoings are ongoing until they're not. Right. But uh, this is Napalm Lullaby from Rick Remender and the artist by Bengal, who they did that, uh, was it like Glory Road or Road to Glory or whatever it was? Oh, uh, uh, about the truckers. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 from yeah. Uh, a little while ago. Mm -hmm. Well, this is kind of their next series. Um, this first issue is going to be a double size, and I actually got to kind of sample this a little bit. So what they say in the solicitation is, a child with an unimaginable power is raised to believe they are God by a cult of zealots, uh, where it's join them or be cast out to suffer with the masses. Now, that is, I did get a lot of that from the reading it, 
but also I felt like it had a lot of a Superman element too. Like there's the kind of classic uh, baby crash lands found by, you know, these farmer types. But what if those farmer types were like extremist cult people? Like they have all these bumper stickers on their car that's like, and like the, the weird God that they worship, his name is something like, Zorp or or Loop or something like that. It's really interesting. But what does that mean? Because in the first issue, it does flash 50 years in the future. And how has that changed? And maybe there's not only this one baby that has arrived, but numerous. Uh, There there has a lot of sci-fi elements to it. Um, More than I'd say it's more sci-fi than superhero. But some familiar elements mixed with that. But uh, really interesting first issue. Definitely give it a try, especially it's a double size, so you get a good taste of what the series is going to be like. I love stories where uh, you know you're 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 with a character, you're with you're you're in a story, but then like at the very end, it shows you a glimpse like into the future. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, how do we get there? I yeah. want to know that story. How do we get from here to there? You know, I love that stuff. Yeah. This has got mechs. This has oh, got sold. Kind of alien looking people, uh, dystopian, all of that. Uh, So this is our A cover by Bengal. This is your interior artist. And we also have the Johnson variant as well. Okay, next up we got other number ones. Starting with, what? Not a number one. A second printing (laughs) of Ultimate Spider-Man number two. Now, you guys know, if you've watched the show before, we have a whole section for second prints and reprints and stuff uh, near the end of the show. But because this is Ultimate Spider-Man number two, we wanted to go ahead and let you know right now that the second print for Ultimate Spider-Man 2 is on FOC this weekend. So if you missed the first issue or Which had trouble getting it... Issue or... 2 will be coming out this coming week. We'll be going over it Monday on That's our right. show. I'm super excited to read that. So yeah, the first printing comes out next week, and then there's already a second printing for number 2. So if you had trouble getting number 1, either the first or second print, now there's a third print coming soon, get your pre-orders in for the second print of Ultimate Spider-Man number 2. Uh, and I guess it's kind of... Hard to tell, like if you're going to be able to get the first printing of number two since it's not out yet. Yeah. But but still, just pre-order, pre-order, pre-order. Please. If at this point you haven't pre-ordered the first print of number two, just bet you probably will not be able to get. You know, bank on the side of caution and go ahead and pre-order yeah. this one uh, because no store can guarantee uh, with all of their pre-orders that they've they're going to have extra copies. Definitely, yeah. So and we got this really cool design cover too. So you know. Why not get it? It's a cool cover. All right, so then next is a new book called Misfortune's Eyes. This is the first of a four-issue miniseries. Um, And this is written by Brooklyn Prince and Elise Fernandez with art by Elise Fernandez. Now, this is uh, $4.99, but it's double-sized, so that's pretty cool. Uh, It's about a teen girl who wakes up to discover that she can see human auras. And... Well, she's going to go on a journey to sort of figure out what her future is. But while she's on that journey, she's going to uncover a hidden psychic town where she's going to learn about her mother's troubled past and her own curse of predicting death. So sounds like maybe she's got like something hereditary. Uh, But she's also going to unearth the immense darkness coming for the town and her own family. So a lot to unpack there. A lot of uh, seems like a lot of darkness. And this young girl is going to have to try to figure out how to navigate all of that. So, uh, yeah, we have our. um, Is this the D cover? Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, S- uh, Sabatini. Uh, I, I think oh, it just got in weird order. Yeah, I think the next one is the A cover. I believe that is your. I think that's the A cover right there. Mm-hmm. And we have a Cabrera cover, and then there is a Corley variant. Oh, nope, nope, nope. One of them was missing. One of them was missing. Okay, you can decide which. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next up is Star Wars Visions by uh, Takashi Okazaki, and this one has been. We talked about this on our Comics Supreme and Flash weeks and weeks ago. It feels like it got pushed and pushed. I think this is the final, this will be the final mm-hmm. order. This time, time for order. sure. This yeah. time for <laughs> sure. But I uh, want to make sure you don't miss out on this because it's really cool following the character of the, the Ronin that appeared in the animated season one of Star Wars Visions and then had a one shot that was just called <laughs> Star Wars Visions. Uh, now we're catching back up with the character. There's even a novel about this character, the Ronin Jedi. Uh, and in this one, we're going to learn more about his past, how he became the Sith, the Sith killer, the Sith hunter that he is. Um, but it, it's really cool. Uh, not a whole lot to say because we've said it multiple times before every time this comes up. But uh, don't miss out on this one because it sounds really cool. This is our A cover for that. 
We also have the uh, Peach Momoko variant. We have a Stan Sakai variant, which I really like. See the Usagi vibe with that. And then I also want to talk about a new one-shot uh, coming out called Star Wars High Republic Crash Landing. Uh, this is by Daniel Jose Older and Rachel Argano. And this is uh, from Dark Horse. So this is, you know, part of their High Republic stuff. And in this, a ragtag team led by Crash Angawa uh, is after anyone who, could, uh, who had a hand in the Nile infiltration of their home world of Corellia, which is, of course, where Han's from and everything. Uh, and they've gotten a lead on who may be the person who is behind the attack. So it sounds like kind of a revenge pirate, that kind of yeah. thing. Uh, but it sounds really cool, so don't miss out on this one. Even if you're reading the uh, High Republic Adventures book, um, you know this is a side one that's just a one-shot you don't want to miss. Next is Little Black Book Number One. This is going to be a four-issue miniseries written by Jeff McComsey, and the art is by Chris Ferguson. And this is about a handyman named Cole. His wife, she's pregnant, but they both find themselves on the crosshairs of a ruthless crime syndicate because Cole's father, I, I believe he passed away, but he left behind a little black book full of underworld contacts, and now the underworld wants that little black book back because it has all their information. It's got their, it's got all their digits and addresses and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, yeah, it sounds like a really cool new kind of crime noir book with a with an everyman kind of at the center and how does he get him and his wife out of it. Sounds really fun. Uh, we have our A cover here. This is by Frank Avia, so I love anytime Frank yeah. Avia does anything. Uh, we have a B cover by Johnson, and then there is a uh, movie poster homage as well. Is that Raising Arizona? I don't know. Hard to tell. Yeah. And next up, we got Notable 2s and 3s, continuations of series that maybe have started or haven't started, but just want to remind you, if you like them or think you'll like them, to go ahead and pre-order the series or the number 2s and 3s. Uh, we're starting with Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, which uh, number 1 just came out this week. Very interesting kind of continuation of the Scarlet Witch series. Uh, but in this one, uh, we saw in the first one that there was a note that was delivered. It was addressed to Wanda and Pietro, and it seemed to be from... Uh, their adoptive father, Magneto, and Wanda destroyed it before Pietro could see it. Now the two are not speaking. They're at odds. But as you can kind of see in the background, the wizard has them both cornered. What's going to happen? Can they work together to defeat the wizard? Uh, he's found a way to kind of manipulate Scarlet Witch where she can't use 100% of her power. So very interested in this one. Issue one was really good. So this is our A cover for that. We have our Mark Brooks headshot variant, and we have a Derek Chu variant. I like how uh, Wizard in the background kind of looks like Galactus. Yeah, he's, a little he's bit. looming large. And next is Thundercats number two. The first issue sold really well, and now we've got the second issue coming up. Um, this in this one, Lionel attempts to use a sight beyond sight to uh, make contact with Jaga to get a little bit of guidance from him because you, know, you know he's he's thrown into this new situation. But instead, he's actually he actually receives a vision, which leads the Thundercats to another Thundarian survivor on Third Earth. So, you know, maybe I'm not sure who that might be, but maybe it's Snarf. Is Snarf from Thundaria? I don't remember. I don't know. Or I thought maybe he was already on the there's planet. There's also but... like uh, Bengal. Oh uh, yeah. White Tiger. Yeah. And stuff. So there's more. There's yeah. more cats out there. So while he's while the Thundercats are doing all that, Slythe and the Mutants have discovered the Pyramid of Mum-Ra. So we're going to do a little bit more Mum-Ra action there, maybe. So buckle up, because this is a Dynamite <laughs> book, so there's 101 different variant covers. So this is our A cover by David Nakayama. Which, I mean, way to go, David Nakayama A covers. Already fantastic. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we have a B cover by Perillo. There is a Declan Shalvey cover. There is a Lee and Chung cover with Mum-Ra. There is a uh, Tao I love how big he is. Yeah, this. that's a that's a big old hand, a big old glove. There's an action figure variant with uh, Tigra. But he doesn't have his mustache. Good. That's, <laughs> that's original. Yeah. Uh, there's a so we've got another Liefeld variant uh, to go along with your first one. If you got the first one, get this one. Uh, there is a uh, Shavli Kalika. Uh, variant and then there's also that in a foil version yep. and then also there is the second printing of number one on foc this weekend so if you didn't get the first printing grab this one this is the live field variant from the first printing of number one but this one you know you can sell it's half sketch variant half uh, full color variant. yeah you can continue the coloring down right. if you want yeah to. <laughs> 
Okay, next up is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, The Return, number two. I really like number one of this, written by Amy Jo Johnson, the original Pink Ranger. Uh, and in this one, we learn a bit more the truth uh, about Kimberly's final moments from the 20 years before, uh, where they finally defeated Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed, but lost one of their members in that fight. Uh, maybe there's more to that story that Kimberly knows because she was there. And maybe we'll paint a better picture of how everything is, how they ended up the way they are now. Plus, uh, how does this play into Trini's mysterious niece, Celine, that appeared at the end of the last one? So, a uh, really good series. Even if you haven't been following all of Boom's uh, Mighty Morphin Power Ranger stuff, if you read number one or haven't, pick it up, get number two, because this is a really good series. So this is our A cover for that. And we also have a B cover. I don't have the name for the B cover, but it looks really cool. Yeah, I like that. I like the reflection. Yeah. It's cool. Next is uh, Night Thrasher number two. Uh, the first one just came out uh, this week. And now we got number two here. Uh, the Night, Thrash Night Thrasher's battle with the OG intensifies. And if you read the first issue, you know who the OG is. And if you read New Warriors back in the day, you probably recognize him. Um, but also... His relationship with Silhouette heats up too, so they're going to maybe get a little bit closer. And he gets a new suit. So everybody loves it when a hero gets yeah. a new costume. And Night Thrasher's had a bunch of new suits over the over the, the decade. So, And I guess that's it right there, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. Because he didn't have a trench coat to begin with, did he? Uh, I mean, he's had one before, I think, but not like as part of his main suit. So, you know... Night Thrasher is bringing the 90s back because Night Thrasher is very 90s. And he's also bringing, uh, hopefully, the, the big trench coat fad back. Everybody's getting leather hopefully jackets. He'll, hopefully he'll have a big shoulder pad, too. Right. <laughs> uh, so that's our A cover right there. And then we have a Lionel Francis U variant. I guess that is his suit. I guess, I guess the big trench coat is part of it. Very cool. Okay, next up, we've got Resurrection of Magneto number three. I haven't read number two yet. It's not out. Uh, but Resurrection of Magneto number one was very interesting. And in this one, the King of Shadows seeks a new soul to inhabit. Uh, will Magneto make it back to the land of the living? Because, you know, Storm is trying to bring him back and uh, not going too well because does Magneto even want to come back? And we'll find out a little bit more in this one. But uh, if you read number one, you're waiting for number two, go ahead and pre-order number three because that's coming out soon. So we've got our A cover right here. We also have our Martin Brooks headshot variant, and we have the X-Men 97 action figure variant. Next is Vengeance of the Moon Knight number three. The second issue just came out this week, and both issues so far have been fantastic. Uh, we still don't know who the new Moon Knight is yet, um, but... In this one, the new Moon Knight is going to be out there just like, you know, punching faces and getting justice. And meanwhile, the former Moon Knight's allies, so uh, Tigra and Hunter's Moon and Reese and Soldier, they set out to find the new Moon Knight's base of operations to try to take the fight to him. Instead of being on the defensive, they're going to go on the attack. Um, so who knows when we'll find out the identity. Probably not this issue. They're probably going to save it for like number six or something yeah. like that. But it's been great so far. I can't wait for the next one. Uh, so number three here. This is your A cover. And then there is a Dikoran cover, which I really like. Next up, we got Star Wars Thrawn Alliances number three, continuing this adaptation of the novel by Timothy Zahn. Uh, haven't got number two yet, but in number three, you're going to see continuation of that. And this It says this time with a space battle for the ages. So that's going to be really cool. I love number one, uh, especially just... You know, getting some more Thrawn content in comics is always great. This is our A cover for that. And we also have an Annie Wu Women's History Month variant. Next is the one hand number two. So um, the first issue of this is really good. And the first issue of The Six Fingers comes out next week. We'll be talking about that one. And that is... That's a separate book, but it runs parallel to this one, whereas this book, The One Hand, follows uh, Detective Ari Nasser as he investigates the One Hand killer uh, who committed this grisly murder in the first issue. The, the Six Fingers, that book, is going to follow the killer. And why did he do it and that kind of thing? But this is The One Hand, number two, and uh, Detective Nasser, he finds a pattern while investigating this murder, right? And that pattern is going to lead him to a mind-blowing... It says mind-blowing art opening, and the results are explosive. So I think <laughs> something is going to blow up. I'm not too sure. Maybe it's somebody's head. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so it's going to be really cool to see how this weaves in and out with The Six Fingers, the other book. 
Um, so we'll have more information about what that might look like next Monday when we talk about that other book. But uh, one hand number two right here, this is your A cover, and then there is a uh, uh, Kumar Laridge uh, Muller B cover as well. That was creepy. Yeah. Next up, we got Wolverine Madripoor Knights number two. You read number one of this. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm more excited for this one because I feel like number one was a bridge between Uncanny X-Men 268 and the story that this miniseries wants to tell. Because at the end of issue one, they were just about to head off to go find this weapon that Captain America's tracking down. Yeah, and in this one, of course, the, the three of them, uh, deeper into the mystery of the missing weapon in Match 4, and Wolverine is going to run into his old enemies, Rough House and Bloodscreen. Okay. I mean, <laughs> great names. Yep. Uh, the 90s are back, man. I was about the, to the say, the 90s are back. Uh, I don't know if Bloodscreen ever uh, crossed into the 2000s. I don't uh, know if they, you took that big step. They, they stayed in the 90s and... <laughs> They're, they're living comfortably there. Yeah. So this is our A cover for that. We also have this Steve uh, Scross variant. Man, Captain America's really hitting that dude with his shield. Like, that's I mean, There's no painful. way his, his head is going to come off his body yeah, in another second. Yeah, you're just seeing like a split second before that yeah. happens. And then we also have the Wolverine uh, Marvel Masterpiece uh, trading card variant, which I love this one. Yeah. I just think... Wolverine, you know, got the Canadian wilderness. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Next up, we got cool covers. Just other really cool stuff we want to make sure you don't miss, starting with... Transformers number six. So this, um, definitely pre-order this as well, please, because we sell out very quickly every time yep. there's a new Transformers. So get your pre-orders in for this, because this is the end of the first story arc. Not the end of the series, just the first story arc that they've been telling since the beginning. Um, and you know, it just says one will stand, one will fall. And I mean, this is it. This is Autobots versus Decepticons, big battle between the two and someone isn't going to survive. We don't know who it is based on the cover. It looks like it might be Optimus Prime, but surely they wouldn't pull a, a, a the movie. That yeah, early. They wouldn't pull a Transformers, the movie on us again. Would they like that traumatized a, a generation? I can speak for that, but, uh, somebody's not going to survive in this giant battle. So, um, yeah, get your pre-orders in because this one's going to be big. Uh, this is our A cover, and then we have a um, Arojo B cover. And I hope you read issue number five if you're looking at this cover. So, sorry. Uh, but you can... Good thing here, he hasn't turned gray yet. That's right. So there's still there's still a spark He's left in He's got a little him. juice left in him, yeah. Okay, next up, we got just some cool covers. Um, these are the uh, Mark Brooks headshot variants. So we've got a couple of these. We've got a really cool one for Black Panther number 10. We also have Captain America or Captain Marvel number 6. We've got a Fantastic Four at number 18. And this issue sounds really cool because it says the secret of Franklin Richards. You know, whenever Franklin Richards is, it comes into something, it's big because he's so powerful. Well, he's he actually is not right now. Well, yeah. He's, he's powerless. But they, there was an issue where Franklin was going to tell them something and they, you know, but then he said, oh, never mind. And like, so Franklin does have a secret and yeah. I guess we're going to find out what it is. Also, this one I thought was interesting. It says, meet the new shield. Yeah. What's like, that about? Like shield with the S dot H dot. Yeah. Like, so I'm really interested to see what this, cause shield really has not been around for a while. I don't remember when they kind of got Disbanded. Weren't, they, weren't they in the issue where Sue Storm turned the sun invisible? Something, and they're yeah. like, you shouldn't do that. You're a weapon of mass destruction now. Yeah. I don't know. So I'll be interested to see what happens in this one. But we got another Mark Brooks headshot variant. And then we have this really nice Phil Noto. And shocking news right here. You know, we got the... Uh, we knew there's a Fantastic Four movie coming, but we got the casting, all of that. Phil Noto actually did a beautiful, uh, uh, like, of the cast in costume yeah. uh image so i like seeing that oh he was working on both of these at the same time right. that's really cool and next is uh iron man invincible iron man number 16 and this is this is a pretty big one too so this is the debut of the mark 72 uh mysterium armor i guess if you've been reading the series for the last several issues tony and emma have been trying to gather up some mysterium uh they used a bunch of it to make some ships uh on mars i think no, uh, they did it in Nidavellir. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to Earth, I think. And uh, But Tony saved a little bit for himself to make a brand new armor. So this issue is the debut of that new armor. And then it says this is the main event, Iron Man versus Fei Long. Uh, so it's all come to it's this. It's been basically. building for this it's, basically since the beginning. Absolutely. So uh, we wanted to show you this headshot variant first because it's very cool. 
But there's also a really cool John Jane cover. This is not the Mysterium armor. Uh, that's like classic, super classic Iron Man. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. There's a Chris Allen Stormbreakers variant with Iron Heart, and, and she's like, you know, de uh, decoding her armor or whatever. And then the A cover by Kale New. There is your uh, your Mysterium, your Mark seventy two armor right there. It looks I super like it. cool. It looks yeah. sleek. Looks cool. I like the the red gold and black i think that's a cool look for it so yeah he had a he had a suit of armor for just a little bit during i think the beginning of the dan slot run and it had some black in it yeah. and I th with the red and gold i thought that looked really cool so I'm, I'm pumped for this yeah it's gonna be really good next up we got spider boy issue number five we'll be reading issue number four uh for our show coming up on monday uh but we always like to talk about spider boy so we're such big fans and in this one can bailey save his best friend halefno uh, that was the one that he promised that he would save when he escaped from, what's her name, Madame Monstrosity or Something whatever like that, it is. Yeah. Uh, and now he's going to have to make good on that. So this is our A cover for that. We also have a Mark Bagley variant. Love seeing Bagley's uh, take on Spider-Boy. We have a Rose Besh variant. I like that because he actually does look... He looks little. like a kid, yeah. yeah. And then, just usually we talk about these later, but wanted to include it with all the Spider Boy. Uh, we're getting Spider Boy Volume One, so pretty awesome one there. This is going to have Spider Boy One through Four and material from Amazing Spider Man number thirty one. So that is going to be seventeen ninety nine. So if you want to catch up on all, not all the Spider Boy, there, he he had some other appearances that are not collected it, in right. here, but for his main, uh, you know, his main stuff, you've got it here. Next is Spider Woman number five. Speaking of Spider Boy, uh, Spider Woman's going to team up with Spider Boy in this issue, but the timing is pretty bad because she has uncovered the terrible truth uh, behind the search for her son, uh, and I guess and it says that she's at her lowest. So I'm guessing I, I'm a little bit behind on Spider Woman. So I'm guessing maybe it's not not great. Like yeah. the search didn't turn out the way she wanted, and she's not doing too great. And in comes Spider Boy for a team up. So uh, I'm sure she's going to be real thrilled with that. But we just wanted to show you this really cool America and Dolfo cover. And then we've got this really nice uh, Cola Women's History Month variant for Star Wars High Republic number five. And the writer, I did see him tease. I don't remember what social media it was, but he was like, get ready to cry. So something bad's going to happen <laughs> in this one or something very happy. Yeah. Uh, but I love this Ahsoka variant for that. So don't miss it. Next up, we've got graphic novels and more. Even though we mentioned a few already, let's get into more. Ultimate X-Men number one, second print. Uh, the first print isn't out yet, but they have already solicited the second print because it's probably going to be big <laughs> just like the other ones. Um, so if you didn't, I actually didn't pre-order Ultimate X-Men number one, the first print, and I'm kind of regretting it now. So uh, I'm glad that there is a second <laughs> print on FOC this weekend. So if you missed out and now you're having second thoughts like I am, uh, grab the second print uh, this yeah, weekend. Great RB Silva cover too. Yeah. Really cool. And next up, we have Amazing Spider-Man 254 Facsimile Edition. We talk back and forth about what... Is there anything special about this issue? Not necessarily, Not really. but it is part of that uh, that started with, what, two, 252? 252. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're going to kind of run through this storyline with Spider-Man when he uh, kind of starts wearing his uh, symbiote suit yeah. in the main title. Yeah. Uh, so don't miss that one if you've been getting all of them, getting this reprint of the storyline. Uh, and, of course, it's got all the ads and all the original fun stuff. Yeah. And next is the facsimile edition of Marvel Superhero Secret Wars uh, number four from back in uh, 84, 85. And I always love this cover yep. because, you know, the Hulk is holding up 50 billion tons. I, I don't know that the Hulk is even that strong, no. but I love this cover. Like, the whole, most of it's just a mountain, and he's holding it up, protecting everybody. And that actually does happen in the book, too. So, um, they've been uh, doing a facsimile for all the Secret Wars books, uh, one through three has already, I don't know if the three's come out yet, but it's it's coming. And then now there's number four, and presumably they're going to go all the way through 12. So if you're collecting these, uh, don't miss number four. And next up, we've got a couple of reprints for uh, G.I. Joe Real American Hero. So some uh, second prints and third prints. So this is a third print of issue 301, because we've been selling out of all of these as mm -hmm. well. A lot of people really enjoying the more classic feel of G.I. Joe. Uh, very cool cover. Then we've got 302. This is also a third printing. And we have uh, 303 second printing. So uh, I love they're doing new covers for these, everything. Yeah. So don't miss out on those. 
And then next is the uh, trade paperback for Superior Spider-Man. This is volume one. This is going to be $19.99. And this collects Superior... Okay, so it's a few things. Collects Superior Spider-Man Returns, which is sort of the, the precursor to the series. And then Superior Spider-Man 1 through 5. And then material from Amazing Spider-Man number 31. So you're getting a lot of good um, Superior Spider-Man related content in there. And next up, we've got Star Wars The High Republic Shadows of Starlight, the collected edition of this, issues one through four. I really like this series. It bridged the gap between phase one of The High Republic and phase three of The High Republic, the one year gap where all the characters, kind of what they went through for that year, uh, the heroes and the villains. So I really, really like this one. Don't miss out. And this is going to be $17.99. And that is it for Comics for the Future. There were a few books this week that we talked about on our Comics Pre-Order Flash that uh, the dates changed everything, uh, like Gargoyles, The Quest, oh, yeah. number one. Uh, they changed around the date, but you can still pre-order it. It's still up there. Uh, just you have a little bit more time for those. Yeah. But these, you will have to have your orders in. Uh, we ask this Sunday by 9 o'clock, so you don't miss out on any of these. Uh, they will be there waiting for you, whether you get them shipped to you or you come to the store to grab them. And stay tuned for our show coming up on Monday. We'll be going over some of the big releases coming up next week. And there's some big ones. We've got uh, Cobra Commander number two. We've got Ultimate Spider-Man number two. We've got there's a Spider Boy, Boy number four. four. Uh, we've got there's Real American Hero 304 four, through five, yeah. something like that. Uh, I've got them all. Edge of the Spider-Verse, number one of the new series. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of really good stuff. So stay tuned for that. Remember to head over to infinityflux.net right now and do all your pre-orders. And I think that's it. Yep. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, see, see ya. ya.